So we're going to talk about different things that actually cause leaky gut. And again, like I said, I want to make sure that you, you understand this piece really, really well, because if you don't understand what causes it and you're doing these things in your diet and your lifestyle, et cetera, you'll, you'll never overcome it. You'll continue to struggle. So we've got up here this diagram. Um, you'll see it's broken down into different sections. We're going to kind of take these different sections a little bit at a time. So one of the big factors and probably the number one factor that I see in people that come to me uh, for nutrition is how food allergies and food sensitivities actually play a role in leaky gut. Now, many of you probably heard about gluten, right? So gluten being probably ultimately the most well-researched, the most well-studied food-based protein that we know can actually cause disruption of the gut itself, the leaky gut, the barriers within the gut. So gluten plays a big role. But there is more to the picture oftentimes than just gluten. Maybe you've already gone gluten-free and you're still struggling. Maybe you've, you're on a gluten-free diet and you still don't, um, don't feel quite well. You're not able to overcome. So let's talk about some of the things that can happen. Food allergies and sensitivities. How do they cause leaky gut? Number one, it can lead to a histamine release. Now, histamine is a chemical secreted by a specialized type of cell called a mast cell. These are immune cells that um, release histamine. And histamine is a dilator. So it basically, one of the things it's been shown to do is open the pores up in the gut. Remember, the gut is supposed to be this nice, tightly sealed junction. And if you can look at this picture, I don't know if we can zoom in on it or not, but these are gut cells here. So what you're looking at is these gut cells, okay, in between them, there are these kind of, you see three little stripes. Those are, those little anchor proteins are referred to as zonulin. And, and so these proteins are what keep the, the cells connected tightly together. And if you have a breakage of that, what you get, like you see these little particles here, they're leaking through directly into the bloodstream. And that's what we don't want. Remember, your gut's a quarantine zone. It's supposed to prevent anything in your GI tract from leaking across into your bloodstream without properly being vetted by your immune system first. So histamine can break these junctions. It can open it up. That's one of the side effects of histamine. Now, if you've ever heard of a condition called EE, this is a very common we know gluten can cause it. EE stands for esophageal uh, eosinophilitis or, or eosinophilic esophagitis, to be more specific. It's when you have eosinophils, a specialized type of immune cell, penetrate into the esophagus. And what eosinophils do is they release histamine. And so they can create a lot of angry red irritation and mimic um, heartburn and create the symptoms of heartburn and acid reflux. But we know gluten can do this. And this is a big part of this is because of histamines. Now, we also know that food and, and uh, food allergens and sensitivities can lead to an immune antibody response. So immune antibodies are another way that we know food can induce a breakage in the gut barrier. So these, these antibodies, this is, particularly this is observed in celiac disease. So those of you who know you have celiac disease, what happens is your body starts to produce an antibody, gets an element of your gut that creates an inflammatory response that breaks gaps or holes in the gut lining. We also can release a chemical compound called a cytokine. These cytokines, um, maybe some of you've had them measured before, maybe not. Doctors don't oftentimes measure these, but TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha is an example of a cytokine and we know that food reactions, food sensitivities can cause a, a secretion of this chemical, which can, again, break holes in the gut lining. We also know there's a type of receptor called a toll-like receptor, TLR for short. And specifically in your gut, there's one called TLR4. And those receptors sit on the surface of your gut cells Okay, and what they do is, is if they're activated, we know like, for example, wheat is really notorious for activating toll-like receptors. And so what happens is these are immune receptors when they're exposed to things they don't like is they create an inflammatory cascade that can contribute to leaky gut. And then, so, so again, activation of toll-like receptors. And then the last on this list of how food 
sensitivities and allergies can create a problem is the disruption of the protein zonulin, which is what I was talking about, which is this little set of anchor proteins in between each of the cells. So disruption of zonulin, histamine release, immune antibody release, release of cytokines, and the activation of toll-like receptors. Now, why do I go through all this science? It's not so that you guys have to you know, memorize this for a biochemistry test. It's because when you go to the doctor, a lot of times the way they measure for food sensitivity um, is really only unique to helping you identify let's make some room here this right here a lot of ways a lot of the times when you go to a doctor to have food sensitivity testing done all they're really measuring is this one element and so if you have this part of it measured it doesn't necessarily fix you if you change your diet to match whatever that test says because these other things might also be going on and playing a role in what's happening so again this is just my experience. Most people that come to me after floating around from many, many doctors, they end up in, in my office. Be, and, and this is a, the common story is they've had an antibody test done. They followed the food uh, restrictions on an antibody test, but they're still struggling. And it's because of some of these other reasons that weren't properly looked at or investigated. And, and so without investigating those properly, again, that leaky gut can perpetuate. So this is a big one, the food allergies and sensitivities causing leaky gut in multitudes of different ways, not just in one way. Now, when we have food allergies and food sensitivities, one of the common side effects of food reactivity, as we mentioned earlier, is inflammation. Now, inflammation is kind of a generalized term. Inflammation can lead to fill in the blank, okay? Inflammation can lead to pain. Inflammation can lead to hormone disruption. Inflammation can lead to uh, imbalances in the way that your body is, is trying to heal and repair. Like chronic inflammation can disrupt and lead to a lot of problems. So we just put really more than anything else, you go to a doctor with these problems and they're going to give you a diagnosis. So inflammation leads to problems or symptoms, right, that then lead to a diagnosis that then typically leads to some type of prescription medicine. Okay, why? Because what doctors are really obsessed with the most is reducing your symptoms with drugs. I mean, this is the practice of medicine. Largely, it's give you a medicine to alleviate or appease your symptoms, but not actually find out why your symptoms exist. Now, this is not me saying medicine is necessarily bad. I'm just calling a spade a spade. This is what it is. Now, the problem with that is if you follow this down, you're, you're reacting to foods, you're developing problems, you get a diagnosis, you're given a medication to mask your symptoms or to control your symptoms so you can improve your quality of how you feel. But then what many don't take into account for is that medications contribute to leaky gut. So maybe many of you have gone gluten-free, okay, to address your health issue because you found out you were gluten sensitive, but you're still on the medicines. And so look at, look at, this is just, and this is not in designed or intended to be the ultimate comprehensive list of medicines that contribute to or cause leaky gut, but these are some of the most common ones that I wanted to bring up. I'm going to add a few to this list that are also common that, that I think you should know about. But one is non anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, non anti-inflammatories, we'll talk more in detail about that in a minute. And you have birth control pills as a category. Birth control pills are known to cause uh, gut inflammation. Actually, if you're on birth control pills, you're six times more likely to develop Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Antibiotics, immunosuppressants, corticosteroids, and antacids, all classes of medications that we know can tear a hole in the gut. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.